Yeah, update on the national media here on American Issues Take Two. And I'm Jay Fidel, and we have with us today Stephanie Stahl Dalton, Cynthia Sinclair, and our special esteemed guest, uh, Chuck Crumpton. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today for this, this discussion to update us on the national media, especially now when the media is again being played. You know, it's not like you play the media, the media itself is being played. Um, got my meaning, Cynthia? Is the media being played? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Um, and they started a while back, and I, I looked up the, the specifics for CNN, which is sort of my bellwether here in all of this. CNN, you know, been so outspoken against what Trump has been doing and, and outspoken about, you know, trying to call the lie a lie. And then suddenly, right after the second um, hearing, I tuned in to CNN <laughs> and I thought, what's going on here? And if you look back to the show that our show right afterwards, I was like up in arms trying to figure out what was going on because the way the setup was, was they had um, Elliot Williams, who's just kind of a slight little guy, and right next to David Urban, who is Mr. Republican himself. Um, he's this big sort of hulking guy, too. And then on the other side of the table, there's Gloria Berger, or Borger, who is an awesome, awesome journalist with a great reputation, sitting next to Alyssa Farah Griffin, who is the White House Director of Strategic Communication during Trump's run. <laughs> and what I'm watching, this is the Anderson Cooper, and what I'm watching is Anderson Cooper give just extended amount of time to both David Urban and this Alyssa Farah Griffin girl. And then as soon as like Gloria tried to like, you know, chime in and counter what they had said, and, and he just cut her off. He gave her like two seconds. Same thing with Elliot Williams, just two seconds of time. And then he let David Urban go and go and go, and this other girl go and go. And I was so mad. I thought, what has happened to CNN? And then I find out that CNN is owned by AT&T, which is also a parent company for Fox. Well, it gets even more involved than that. So from 1980, Turner Broadcasting, Ted Turner started CNN, right? And then in 1996, it went to Time Warner. From 1996 to 2018, it was Time Warner. And then it went to AT&T. From 2018 to 2022, there has been another switch though. And it showed, obviously to me, when I was watching, this is all about CNN here, right? Warner Brothers Discovery had a, um, a merger, right, in 2022. And so now there's a guy named Chris Licht who is in, in charge. One of the things that I think is good about what he's doing is that he's, he kept most of the, you know, uh, the main people in charge, he kept, but he added a bunch of new people. And they have this new idea about things. They want to give voice to the other side. I, I don't understand that. I want to see journalism go back to you find the facts, you report on the facts. There's no hyperbole. There's no opinion. There's no, unless it's called opinion and it's brought out as opinion after the facts have been presented. I'm so tired of this opinion has now devolved truth into not even being truth anymore. And I'm well, not what sure about lies? Doing. What about lies? Well, you know, suppose you're a newscaster and somebody is lying on your watch. Um, suppose um, you're, you know, you have a news story where somebody has lied. Suppose we talk about the big lie. What does uh, Chris Licht have to say about that? No more talking about the big lie on CNN. Maybe they can refer to it differently, but they can't call it the big lie. And I'm how, like, about, how about the big untruth? There you go. I, I had a teacher in grade school who would say, oh, you're talking an untruth. And so well, what does that mean? <laughs> it means you're lying. <laughs> That's what it means. 
do we, I, you know, how do we know? We know that Fox News um, sort of broke off when there was this big, right, switch and this merger that went on. Fox News broke off from Fox Entertainment. And so Murdoch and his son still run Fox. And I guess they've got some sort of a say now also in, um, in CNN. So MSNBC, I find, has the most truth in their reporting. Um, they don't spend too much time on opinion unless they talk about it as opinion. Um, you know, I think as far as CNN goes, they got rid of the best guy that was C um, on CNN. Chris Cuomo was super good about having, you know, the two sides come on. But as soon as one of the sides started to lie, he would cut them off and say, no, no, no. You don't get to come on my show and lie. You know, if you want to tell your opinion about something, that's one thing, but you don't get to come on and lie. And of course, Chris Cuomo is gone now. So who's going to be the one? Even Jake Capper, I have watched, and he's a little, you know, wishy-washy too, you know. And Jay, you and I talked about this yesterday. This is really important. Um, most of Central America, right, and they most rural America, they don't watch any cable news. All they watch is their nighttime news station. And Sinclair Broadcasting is what ends up, you know, filling most of those news spots. And so what do we know about Sinclair? They're as conservative and up Trump's butt as you can get, excuse me for being gross about it, but it's true. And that's how they are. And so that's what rural America is getting. So no wonder there's this big, you know, swath of people that don't understand what's happening in our country. And I know I've gone on too long. I want to give other... Uh, let me go to you, Stephanie. Stephanie, you know, there seems to be like musical chairs with these hosts and moderators more than before. Uh, it, it troubles me, for example, that Rachel Maddow is uh, off except on Mondays. It also troubles me that uh, I, I can't find the news for all the, the commercials. I'm getting to be an expert in these fabulous high-tech drugs. Um, and, and I can usually tell my doctor what to do now. I, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> they probably gave me a try. Yeah, the good point. Uh, I, I've, had, I've been informed by several people that one of the leg ups on, on Democrats that Republicans have or conservatives have over liberals is that even though Rush is gone, the conservative movement, extreme conservative, has talk radio. And with what Cynthia was mentioning, it is uh, it is talk radio that these people are listening to all the time. They may not have a whole bunch of TV sets, uh, you know, uh, out there in rural land that we, what you were referring to, Cynthia, so that they've got this talk radio going on and you can pick it up everywhere, including in Hawaii. In fact, at night, sometimes that's all you can find is talk radio conservative, unless you want to do jazz or some music thing. But um, I'm amazed that that is an oversight. There isn't, and I was wondering if Rachel Maddow is doing doing some things on podcasts that are going to catch that up. But as to a CNN's uh, effort here, I, I, I don't understand that they're letting Brian Stelter go and the reliable sources. That that was a program that I thought was stellar and, and uh, matches up with those that Cynthia listed as a really, you know, new, neutral and covering the news. So also, they hired Chris Wallace a while ago, and that then they fired that, then they canceled that whole program set. So what, is he now held back in the supply room? Why isn't he being brought out? Because he's another guy that does what you were saying Chris does, uh, which I wish he had done more of, but that, that's over with him. Uh, but Chris could come in, Chris Wallace could come in and take on something like that. I haven't seen his name brought up in anything. Did he retire? I don't know. So I think that it's possible we're jumping the gun here or, or the shark <laughs> and, and we need to sit back and see what this licked guy, new CEO for CNN actually is trying to make happen. Because it would be, uh, I see that that CNN and MSNBC are kind of are kind of morphing into each other. 
So I, I'd be fine with CNN getting back to a much more reliable sources or more neutral, neutral and to do the kinds of things that you described earlier are done uh, on the program on behalf, you know, in, in the of getting the facts out, you know, for both sides and opinions on that and let MSNBC, as I, I believe it is biased, I think most people um, experience it as bias and is kind of considered poison by anybody on the conservative side. So it, it's great to have those two shows if they are different. That gives uh, the, the more liberal viewpoint on out, uh, um, more diverse outlook. That would be good as far as I'm concerned. But let's see what he's going to do. But it's real questionable how he's going about it now. Chuck, I, I would like to get to, you know, the very important point of how well the media, whatever side, whatever orientation is doing on, on Trump's campaign against the FBI, against the Department of Justice, against law enforcement, um, about what happened in uh, Mar-a-Lago. You know, it seems to me that what's coming out is not legally accurate. Uh, you know, what, what you want the affidavit with all that sensitive information in a case of violation of classified information, nuclear secrets, you want the affidavit that would reveal all the people uh, and, and then you would, um, you know, uh, distribute that list of people and wind up having them threatened or, or injured or killed. Um, do we really need that? Do we really need a special master? Uh, from a legal point of view, these things strike me as very questionable, and yet they are sucking all the oxygen out of the room, uh, just like his other arguments in his attack on the FBI. So from that point of view, is, is the press covering this correctly? Or are they just perpetuating mis misinformation, dis disinformation, and allowing the public to be confused? Well, it's a great question, Jay. And I think we need to look at in the historical context that maybe the major thing that happened with the media during the Trump presidency was that they essentially handed over complete control of the narrative to the Trump camp. Yeah. Initially Trump, and then some others, Cruz, McCarthy, McConnell, others started to pick up on that. They got in pieces of it. But if you look at who the media is, who funds them, who controls them, where those dollars come from and where they go, there's no question that they're not engaged in the old Edward R. Murrow style, Walter Cronkite style of investigative objective journalism. There was a little bit of that from Dan Rather at the beginning of the Trump administration, which was gradually kind of snuffed out like air to a candle. And it hasn't been replaced. We don't have journalists of that caliber, that quality, that character, or that courage to have stepped into that place. We have Heather Cox Richardson, who is an extraordinary blog disseminator on what's happening in our political system, and I commend her. But if anyone is looking to our media establishment to try and set right the misuse and manipulation of the narrative by the Trump camp. I don't see any signs of that happening. Yeah, uh, Jeff Portnoy was on the show yesterday, and uh, you know his his point about all this is that Trump has been sort of setting us up on this, and you know, and and just as he manipulated the press when he was in real estate. Um, back when in New York, uh, he's it's a past master at it. Um, and this is, um, you know, a campaign that uh, is very effective. And uh, as, as you say, he controls the narrative and the press goes along with it. I mean, he's a, back in the day when he was in real estate, he would he would make these fraudulent calls to the press and pretend to be other people uh, and give them, quote, tips. And they would and they would, you know, they would take those tips and, and formulate formulate the news around those tips. And now he's doing the same thing. This is a major, major campaign. 
And I think there's a lot of factors in here, but I guess the ultimate question, Chuck, I want to ask you is, are people being correctly informed? Or is, the, is public opinion, public sensibilities, public understanding going off the side? And if it is, where does that take us? One of the things that's really interesting with recent developments is that two things happened after Mar-a-Lago. One of the more respected general nighttime news people for NBC had a sit-down interview with Merrick Garland, who just laid out for him the intent to proceed without fear or favor toward wherever the investigation would lead. We see Trump's comebacks the shot at special master, that's not working. The attempt to twist things around, that's not working. And even the heavily redacted affidavit in support of the Mar-a-Lago search that the DOJ submitted and the judge has approved and cleared now, that's come out of DOJ approval. So I think strategically they're dealing with this in a very, very adverse media situation uh, about as well as they can. But you're right, for the consumer, the access to objectively reliable, comprehensive information is extremely challenging. Yeah, we're 90 days away from an election, Cynthia. And, you know, is the public ready for this? Some people are already voting, you know, by mail-in ballots, what have you. Um, this has got to have, and it's a very hard question I put to you, all of you guys. Um, is the public ready? Does the public have objective information? Or is this going to affect the vote? Is it affecting the vote now? Um, and, I mean, you know, I would say the answer to that is easy. But the more difficult question is, how is it affecting the vote? Well, it's the same problem that we've had from day one. Once Trump took over and made the media the enemy of the people, so nobody has any kind of, they don't think they have any integrity and no one has any trust in them anymore. So even when they're being told the truth, they go, oh, maybe it's not true. So um, it, it creates this whole soup of uncertainty right and so you're gonna have the people though that are in the rural areas that are getting their news from Sinclair broadcast and they're gonna they're gonna think their way and they're gonna think they know what's true and they know what's real and same thing is gonna happen to the, the urban people who are watching MSNBC or even NBC, you know? Lester Holt does a good job. CBS, they do a good job, right? Um, even ABC does a good job. But some of these in the rural areas are owned by Sinclair Broadcasting. And so they don't get the same, like we get ABC, NBC, CBS, and it's one thing. And it's not always that when it's shown in the rural areas. And so I think there's gonna be a big divide just like there was before. Although now, because there has been a lot of talk in the media about the big lie and literally the big lie, those two words have gone a long ways to establish facts that otherwise wouldn't have been. Just those two simple words. And so I think people will hold on to that when they're looking at someone who is a big liar, someone who is an election denier liar, they're going to go, wait, that's the big lie. Wait a minute. I don't want the big lie. So even people that aren't super informed have heard about the big lie and they know what it is. So I think that that's going to bring people over to the Democratic side also, because they don't want to follow somebody that's part of the big lie. And mm. I think that's, Maybe that's why it's so troubling that, uh, that Chris uh, Licht uh, says we're not going to use that term anymore. Yeah, exactly. Very I, I, troubling, because it's because the message there is there is no big lie. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Stephanie, let me go to you. And, and this is also a hard question. Ready? 
Yeah. <laughs> Hit me with your best shot, Jay. Okay. <laughs> we know that nothing stays the same, especially in you know the political environment we've had since Trump. And and things move so quickly. And and I have to say the media changes too. We've been talking about that. Um, but uh, how has it changed? Um, you know, say from a year or two or three years ago, how has it changed from the middle of the Trump administration till now? And where is it going? What are the trends you see? Uh, we know there are changes, um, maybe some changes we don't like, but what are those changes and what are the changes to follow? I think uh, we are at soap opera. Uh, <laughs> across the board, it's all devolved. The days John Chancellor, Walter, Roger Mudd, Dan Rather, gone gone along with their integrity too but that style has just been chucked and we've moved along very rapidly into i think what fox news went to early on because they want to be the graphic novel let's get you know some more appeal here for everybody to be able to see it and understand it let's not use any big vocabulary words that's why we say big lion not mendacity or mendacious you know, so the whole the whole intent is turned upside. This inverted. It's an inverted curve, <laughs> like we have on the on the treasuries. But so I think where, that where is it taking us? I mean, it's clearly, us. clearly the 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 negative elements of what we're watching here, um, you know, are are there. But are they going to get worse? And in what way? Well, where they've taken us is that most of the nation, like we're looking at, it's got to be 40%, is looking at this stuff like it's a simple soap opera, like things are are, are clear and everyday kinds of, of uh, ways of thinking. Nobody doing any in-depth or understanding indirect relationships and what's associated with what. Nobody doing any of that. It's just feeding to the lack of critical uh, thinking that's out there, the lack of discernment and judgment uh, that that's out there. So they're they're not trying to build that as these other these other news efforts. I think so. Are. So far, we've been talking about television, cable news, but yeah. um, with the exception, I I, I put uh, the BBC and Shepard Smith is the is the name of exactly. of a guy who's a pretty classical news news person. Yeah. But um, that. but the big the big shows um, you know fall within what you're saying. Uh, the, the question is, uh, what about the print press? You know, I, you're not wrapping this around uh, the New York Times uh, or the Washington yeah. Post, or for that matter, Reuters. Um, oh, no, there's I a difference, that. isn't there? What, what is the difference? Well, I think that, that that it's gotten so much even better. More are higher level and better and more uh, at the level that we, we need of examination and, um, uh, and um, you know, you know, just dis displaying um, the complexities of the issues has that all, has all gotten much, much better. I think the New York Times always was good and all of those high level uh, publications, uh, newspapers uh, that have the big reputations are, are, have always been good, but more are catching up that way, like Vanity Fair and all these other magazines that used to do a lot of other stuff. I think they've raised their game. And TV cable has. Are they having as much down. influence as the TV? Uh, no. And Sinclair Radio. Yeah, because you've got to be able to read. Now on the on the t the radio, Rush set the standard from the beginning. When was that? Ninety one. He first came on, at when we first went into the first Gulf War, and he started in with this style of just uh, this lowest level of discussion and everyday conversation and not not uh, providing people with the kinds of things that they can be challenged to think with and, and understand better anyway so the the that that models in place and I think that the progressive and liberal folk need to have more representation in the in the radio line as you say yeah, yeah. and Rachel has done some of that like with Bagman and some of the things that she's done have been excellent who remembers the specifics of Agnew I didn't I mean we know what Nixon did in general but most people well her, her work uh, always reflects a, a, a level of research yeah you know, yes yeah, so that's mean, what we mean. the research should be involved if you you know and for Absolutely. example Cynthia always does research so yeah. so Chuck 
I I I watch um, you know NBC MSNBC a lot, and uh, what I notice there um, is that you know there are legal experts. Some of them are national names, and uh, they call them what contributors uh, and all that. Well, I think that means they pay them. You know, uh, <laughs> let it be known that we don't pay anybody on Think Tech. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but. But um, these guys appear almost every day, and they render legal advice, and you're getting it out of the same mouth over and over again. Um, I think the research is pretty much limited, <laughs> except in the case of Rachel Maddow uh, and maybe Lawrence McConnell. Um, Melbourne. Yeah. Um, Ari Melbourne. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. but but I I, I don't I have a, a kind of a. Mm, I have a, a reaction to that. I, I would like to see more research. Uh, I would like to see more faces. Um, I would like to see um, the newscaster actually think about this and become a real news analyst himself or herself. Uh, what are your thoughts about seeing the same faces giving us legal advice all the time, which is laden with opinion? Well, and it goes back to the central point that you, Stephanie, Cynthia, have been making is that the prior independent, respected, objective journalists that we held in high regard for many years and had a good number of them and awarded high levels of stature and appreciation to, those are gone. And there's nothing in the works to replace them. You can hire advocates to come in, and that's essentially what's being done on these things. But that's a long way from independent, objective journalism that weighs well researched, diverse sources in a search for objectively reliable truth. That's what's missing. You're right. And we're going into an election without that again. And we saw what the lack of that did for the 2016 election. So as yeah. Churchill said, why should we expect different? Well, that's, you know, that's my, this is the major question of the show. And I'm also going to ask the others about this. Um, so we, ha we have an attack on the FBI and the DOJ, which are really, really important institutions. And we have the, this attack is organized by, orchestrated by, led by Donald Trump for his own reasons. You know, the, 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 uh, the point yesterday with uh, 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 Jeff Portnoy was that um, he was running out of gas on his big lie. So he decided to create another, another thing um, to suck the oxygen out of the press, to play the press. And so it becomes, you know, his victimization. Uh, at uh, Mar-a-Lago, um, and he's good. He's good. I mean that, and you know, it's like when you litigate and you and you say to the other guy, "You're good." You don't mean good at all. <laughs> Trump is good. So my question to all of you guys is: He's is he winning this battle against the uh, law enforcement community, the DOJ? who we rely on in ways we don't even understand, uh, and the FBI, uh, and law enforcement in general, is, is he winning? And the second point is, um, how can we deal with that? Uh, wait, wait, everybody to get a chance. I'm asking Chuck first. But I thought, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I'd say no. I, I'd say right now, in my view, Merrick Garland, has a much better strategic team and more thought, and he's done better in response to that stuff. Hey, Trump continues to throw more and more new things out there in the classic throw it at the wall, see if it sticks philosophy. Hey, but whether he's winning attention in the media and whether he's winning credence in the populace are two different things. And if you look at major recent elections on e recent issues, whether it's abortion in Kansas or representation in New York, he's not winning there. 
only within his own party. The question is, can he win in the overall electorate? Well, we're going to see. We are seeing soon enough. Um, Cynthia, your answer to that. Is he winning? And what can we do um, to, you know, um, avoid a, uh, a, a avoid having the press played? Okay, so I don't think he's winning. And we forgot to talk about Owen and Newsmax, right? Those are the two other ones that are just like... I, it's pure it Fox on steroids, right? And a lot of people pay that extra money to watch that. But I don't think he's winning against the, the DOJ or the FBI. Um, I even heard this morning on Fox, because I do watch it just for, just for investigation purposes, um, to see what they're doing and what they're saying so we can keep track of what the other side is doing, right? And to get ready for this show today. But this morning, uh, they had somebody on there that was talking about that the horribleness, which is not the word I want, <laughs> what's wrong with going after the FBI. And, you know, we just have to wait this out and see it through to the end. And we can't be demonizing the FBI or the DI DOJ or any of that stuff. And I thought that was pretty good. Okay, so what do we do about it? Last week... Oh gosh, I have an embarrassing uh, thing that I must admit <laughs> because I was talking about Liz Cheney's new group that she's founding, right? And uh, I said it was the Hack Watch. Oh gosh, I was so wrong. I was so wrong. Oh, and I feel so bad about it. So I, I have the actual, um, uh, I have the actual name of it now. It's called the Great Task which isn't that much better of a name, but it came, this is where she got the name from. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I'm gonna read a little something just for my last little bit here. Um, this'll be my closing, okay? The new group, which will serve as Cheney's primary political vehicle as she considers whether to run for president in 2024, does not have an official name yet, but an informed guess is the great task which was the name of Cheney's final ad of the campaign. The phrase is from the last sentence of the Gettysburg Address. And Cheney also refer referenced it in her concession speech from Jackson on Tuesday night. Cheney's campaign filled paperwork early Monday. I mean, her, they filed paperwork early Monday, converting her campaign committee to a leadership pack and renaming it The Great Task. The move will allow Cheney to contribute and continue raising money and potentially distribute it to like-minded candidates in the near term while she hashes out a longer term strategy. So that's what we can do. We can follow Liz and we can support her because she's doing a good job. Now, there was a piece I sent around to you guys about um, about Liz Cheney and it was a suggestion opinion piece uh, that uh, Joe Biden include her in in his uh, White House staff. I that like pretty good idea. So Stephanie, one thing I find that if I watch the cable news, I only get like one issue or two issues or maybe three issues in a given day, and it's all about the battle, the political battle in the country. What they have stopped doing is any other news. If you look at the New York Times, the Washington Post, or Reuters, or the Economist, or any of those better publications, um, you will see that they cover a lot more news. Even Shepard Smith covers a lot more news. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is very troubling. You know, uh, has Ukraine stopped? Is Ukraine not involved? You know, it used to be that MSNBC had a reporter on the ground in more than one city on a given day. And now they're, you know, that whole issue is off the stack. I feel like I'm being cheated. And I'm forced to watch the same issues, just one or two or three of them, all around the political divisiveness in the country every day. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I, I, it's such a good point. It's a limited menu, and you turn it on, and you just hear it over and over again. Not that they can't, they don't have to repeat. They do, but but I so agree with you. But what what I wanted to do it with that other question you had about is he winning? I wanted to say that yes, he's winning as long as 
the whole world continues to defer to him, provide him with the respect that is associated with U.S. presidents and that he doesn't in any, he hasn't earned in any way. And as he operates and always constantly, in addition to throwing stuff against the wall, as, as Chuck said earlier, of course, he's a pivoter. Who would be able to throw back in the face of DOJ that the, these kinds of things that he is and that they are taken seriously? When are people going to stop catering to him and um, and and take take away this privilege and respect that he is given for every utterance? Whether it makes sense, it's logical, it isn't true. And I am appalled at this. And I think Mary Trump pointed this out in her early book and in early interviews, that he is enabled over and over again. Everybody enables him. And this is one of the ways the media is and the Justice Department. And again, what, going back to what the attorney general did say, he should be treated like we would if we went up there with a Dumbo you know, letter about a request for a master uh, reviewer or you know, an extension. Why is he's got to be put in his place? And as long as they're not doing that, then we are gonna be involved in this mess every day, every hour. And I'm just waiting for somebody to step, I thought Merrick Garland could do it, but now I'm beginning, you know, he's following up and getting the, making the request to the judges. And when is he going to say, is he going to say stop? I think we're down to him. He's got to say, stop. This is not going to That's be an excellent point. And uh, therefore, Charles, uh, I leave it with you to answer who should be responding. Because if you have one hand clapping, and that's what Trump is doing by taking the narrative, you should have the other hand clapping, too. Uh, Joe Biden does not meet him at the pass. He does not respond in kind. And for that matter, Merrick Garland doesn't either. And uh, you know, Chris Ray is not about to do that. It's not, his, it's not in his wheelhouse to do that. Who should do it? And don't you think it should be done? When Trump makes an outrageous statement, somebody should say, no, 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 that's not true. And, and, and meet him at the pass. Or are, we about missing, are we missing the boat on this? <laughs> Stephanie, repeat your thought. I'm sorry. I would just, how about ignoring him? Like we would be ignored. That's another part <laughs> of my question, Chuck. Yes, Chuck. What about that? <laughs> who's going to do it for, who's going to take the step and risk? You know, if the media had figured that out five years ago, we wouldn't be here now. Yes, <laughs> we are in the soup. If you give a narcissist a spotlight, look out. So true. Yeah. yeah. Hire a psychologist, CNN, if you want to make it better. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. This is insane. It's just been, uh, you know, compete, you know, giving him all the runway and all the airspace he needs. Okay, while he was president. We're done with that. You are what you are now, which doesn't deserve all this attention. Yeah, well taken. So any more, Chuck? Well, I got okay. one, Austin. I got all right. One. All okay, right. okay, Cynthia, Cynthia, let's have John it. Heilman, <clears throat> every time he has to say ex-President Trump, he says that twice impeached, disgraced, coup plotting, uh, Mm -hmm. Disenfranchised, no, not disenfranchised. Uh, I think that's all. Dis yeah, coup plotting ex president. So we should all refer to him that way as the document speech yeah. disgraced coup plotting ex president. Okay, we're out of time, you guys. And besides, I have to go take my Sky Rizzy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it solves everything, like sort of like snake oil, you know. And and uh, and all all the other drugs I have learned about, and I have spent so much time learning about these drugs and seeing all these happy time you know ads about them. I I wonder about the seriousness of the news, um, you know, because for every minute that I'm watching ostensibly this news we get on cable, I'm watching Sky Rizzi, uh, and and I'm I'm only saying that it, you know if they if they really want to you know give us a, a, a true fact, they they have to pick ads. And I don't mean playing the same ads over and over again on all the channels. They have to pick ads that have the right tone. Anyway, uh, I got to go. We got to go. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Cynthia. 
Thank you, Stephanie. We'll be back next week. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.